Hi everybody, I hope that everyone is doing well. In this lecture we will cover chapter 3, what is money. And in this chapter we will see that what is the definition of money and different functions for the money and different measures of money. Money is usually defined as anything that is generally accepted as payment for goods or services or in the repayment of debts. Actually, we should concentrate about the word anything because money usually could be anything, but under some conditions. The first condition should be generally accepted from different persons or institutions in economy. And this general acceptance should be ready for two sides. As payment for goods and services, usually if you're going to the supermarket to purchase any goods and services and you provide money, it will be accepted. Or any other places, if you wanted to pay, for example, for staying in a hotel, or already reserve a ticket in an airplane, and so on. The second part, for the generally accepted, it is the repayment of debts. For example, if you have a loan from the bank and you want to pay back this loan, it will be accepted to pay using money. However, in this definition, we already see that it is a broad definition. So we should give some limits for this one. But before this, between different definitions mainly money wealth and income money is a stock concept to understand what is the difference between a stock and the flow concept we should take this two examples wealth Wealth is a total collection of pieces of property that serve to store value, like liquid money, like car, like house, anything like this. And this is the accumulation, and this is a stock. To know what is the difference between the stock and the flow, let us try to explain what is income. Income is a flow of earnings per unit of time. This is like that you open a tap and this open tap is already has a flow. This flow is a water. It is repeated. It is usually what we already mean by income because income is repeated every month, for example, for salary, every quarter, maybe for some other workers and so on but the accumulation of this income what we call the stock it is a wealth now we're turning to the functions of money the first function is medium of exchange and in medium of exchange this mainly working for two things Eliminate the trouble of finding a double coincidence of needs, which means reduces transaction costs. Assume that the case in Porter, where there is two individuals. The first has a wheat, the second has ox. How they call the change? To to be sure that the exchange will happen, they should have what we call double coincidence of wants, which means the owner of ox at the same time at the same place is meet with the owner of wheat at the same time at the same place and each one of them is already in a need for the second goods with the other person. But this is sophisticated. The second promotes specialization. How people could specialize in a specific job if there is no money? If there is no money 
and the double coincidence of needs is very difficult to occur so that everyone should cover everything by him or herself which means there is no specialization if you need anything you should do it by yourself but this is sophisticated so that people are preferring money because with money for owner of ox can sell it in market receiving money and the purchasing wheat from the person he already own wheat and in second promote specialization for any person could specialize in one work receiving income and after receiving this income he can purchase anything he is want or in need for so money makes our life easy but there is some condition for a medium of exchange must be satisfied first be easily standardized look to the case that people they are using a stone as money we don't easily standardize stones because they are different in size in color brightness and so on but in case of money each twenties they looks like each other. Each fifties looks like each other. And so on. Widely accepted. This is very important in case of money. Because we know that to really say this is money, it should be widely accepted. Usually people accepting money, paper money nowadays everywhere and no one reject it be divisible which mean I can divide it in a small parts this is very clear in case of nowadays money because if you have 200 pounds you can divide it into 100 pounds 100 for 50s 50s for 20s 10 5 1 pound and so on but in case of stone money you can do something like this. Look to the funny thing that you're going to the supermarket to purchase something like a chewing gum. And you have a stone money which equal to 100 pounds. How can you purchase something like this? It will be sophisticated. Because how can you divide a part of this stone is exactly equal to the price of this chewing gum. And after this easy to carry money should be easy to carry if you are a very wealthy man and the money is a stone or made from stones this will be very difficult to carry it in your pocket or to carry it in your shoulders but nowadays if you have 1 million and you want to carry everywhere this is very easy to carry not deteriorate quickly which means it, it will not wear up quickly which means that money should last for some time because people should use it in long time so that we made it from different materials usually this could be something like cotton second function is unit of account this used to measure value in the economy and to reduce transaction cost if we speak about accounting we know that there is a balance sheet in the side of assets we can find land building car furniture and so on but how can we gather all of this together they are not one thing but instead of this we transfer each one of these assets to its value measured by money and at the end, we gather the different values for these assets in one side. Third function is a store value. Store of value, which means that we use to save purchasing power over time. Other assets could serve for this function, but money is the most liquid. Let's have an example for this. 
assume that you are working every month and you already producing something valuable you transfer your production to a money and you save the value of this in the money you can save your walls in money because this is most liquid and you can use it at any time but the problem that in time of inflation money lose its value however other asset will keep their value so that people didn't prefer to keep all of, your, of, all of the wells in money only but they divided in different assets in this point evolution of the payment system we will see that how money is already developed usually we start with commodity money commodity money means that we use any community or any goods as money but there is some condition for this it should be valuable for this reason we don't expect that sand will be a commodity money is the standardized and divisible commodities which means that we could have some standard for the money and we can divide it into small parts and for example of this precious metals like gold and silver also there is other goods they already used as money in some specific period of time in some cases like cigarettes we will return to this example again by the end of this lecture after this we have a fiat money fiat money mean that paper money here we exclude any coins because we already in recent years transferred from using some metals like gold and silver to use paper money like nowadays this paper money decreed by government or issued by law through government to be the legal tender or official currency after this we have a checks it is very easy to pay for large amount of goods like car like building by signing a cheque any seed of carrying a lot of money because cheque is an instruction from you to your bank to transfer money from your account to the other person or other institution account after this we have electronic payment this is like already paying online paying online like bills utility bills this could include electricity gas water and so on and also in egypt we have an example of this like fowry e-money here we're looking for electronic money this is mainly like debit card credit card and so on also there is another example for this stored value card or smart card this could be looks like the gift card if you want to give someone a gift but you don't know what is the best for this person you could purchase this card and they charge it with a specific amount of money and send it to the person you want to give a, a gift for so this person could use this card to purchase whatever he wanna from specific places e-cash which means you can transfer cash easily one example of this in Egypt it could be Vodafone cash here we have a question are we going to a cashless society economists they already believe from many years before around 40 or 50 years that in the future people will not use any cash and we will become a cashless society but until now 
there is some people they are still using cash. We will see later that what could be a reason behind this. Here we have an example of a very new money, Bitcoin, electronic money. This is already introduced in 2009. This is already introduced by unknown person or institution. And they are already using codes to already solve some equations they call this is mining and by mining you produce more coins bitcoins and they use it to create money decentralized using computer power however Bitcoin is used as a medium of exchange in some cases, in some countries, in some stores, but we don't expect that it will replace money in the near future. There is some problems with this Bitcoin. First, it is not issued by any central bank, so no one is responsible for the value of this money. Second, the fluctuation sharper fluctuation in this money because we can see that the price or the value of bitcoin is already fluctuated sharply from one thousand dollar per bitcoin to one thousand five hundred to six thousand to five hundred and so on so people will not agree to use it as a store of value Now, how can we measure money? Usually we have many different monetary aggregates or measure of money. But mainly we will concentrate here for two different types. The first is what we call the narrow definition of money. The second is a broad definition of money. First we call it M1, which is or includes all most liquid assets like currency paper currency that we use every day this is the most liquid traveler checks if you travel from a country to country you can ask your bank to issue a checks you can take it with yourself and when you travel to any country you transfer this check to cash by selling this to any foreign bank so in no time, or we can say that in few minutes, you can transfer it to currency. Demand deposit. Sometimes we call this as current deposit, which means you deposit money in bank and you have a right to withdraw this at any time. So we call this as current or demand, which means at the time of demand for this money, you can withdraw from it. Nowadays, we have ATM machines everywhere in the streets and in some institutions, in some shopping centers. As long as you have your debit or credit card, you can withdraw from this ATM. If you already have a demand deposit and you have a, a debit card, you can withdraw from your account. Other checkable deposits, which means that you have other deposits and you can withdraw by signing a check for these deposits. All of these four components represent the another definition of money. And we can see that these are the most liquid assets. But sometimes we expect this definition excludes some other things could be used as money. Now we turn to the broad definition of money. This is M2. In M2, we are adding 
plus M1, the four components, some less liquid assets, but still could be used as money, like a small denomination time deposits, which mean deposits that can be turned to money in short period of time. Also, we can add saving deposits, because these saving deposits, however, the maturity of this saving deposit is long term, mainly more than one year, but as a depositor you have a right as a depositor you have a right to break down this and get back your money after waiting for a short period of time, like three months, six months, something like this. Money market mutual funds. Here we see that we can find money market, not capital market, because money market is working in liabilities for short term. And for sure, at this is for short term, we can already we can already measure this and include it in money. Here we can see that an example for Federal Reserve monetary aggregates. Here we can see that the first four components: currency, traveler checks, demand deposit other checkable deposit with the sum 2776.7 in billions of dollars is already a one if we added the small denomination time deposits saving deposit money market mutual funds the sum would be 11290.4 billion of dollars as m2 and this is how can we calculate the measures of money for M1 and M2. Also, we can see that in this graph that M1 is consists of four components, which represent the null definition of money. If we enlarge the circle by adding extra three components, we can find M2. There is other measures like M3 and M4. But in our study, we will concentrate only for these two. Finally, thank you very much and we'll see in next lecture.